Shin Chunji Online Seminar Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation God's New Covenant Testifying about Revelation to the Whole World August and September 2021 The First and Second Shin Chunji Online Seminar A total of 30,372 participants from 12 places, approximately 1,800 pastors in attendance. The words of Revelation are revealed finally in 2,000 years. The chairman and the 12 tribe leaders of Shincheonji Church of Jesus are making known the secrets of the Kingdom of Heaven. From October 18th to December 27th, every Monday and Thursday. Shincheonji Online Seminar is broadcasted worldwide simultaneously. We invite everyone to testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation God's New Covenant. Pastors, theology students, all the believers, it is nice to meet you here at Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation God's New Covenant. My name is Kim Woo Hui, and I'll be your host today. This online seminar from Shincheonji is being broadcast to the whole world simultaneously. The book of Revelation is a book of prophecy in the New Testament, which every believer must know. It is also the conclusion of the entire Bible. Revelation's prophecies and fulfillment will be testified clearly today once again. One of the 12 tribe leaders who learned directly from the promised shepherd, Saul James tribe leader, will be teaching the content of Revelation chapter 22 today, following from the last seminar. I pray and wish that God's love and grace will be here with you today as He gives life to all creation like the light, rain, and air. We'll begin the seminar now. Let us first pray with a united heart. Our Father God, who is a source of life and all blessings, we thank you. We give you thanks and glory to you with all of our sincere hearts for allowing us to be present in Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, and for being with us today. The prophecies of Revelation were given 2,000 years ago as a new covenant made with Jesus' blood. They have become fulfilled and appeared in reality today. And you are allowing us to perceive, believe, and keep the new covenant, the book of Revelation, testified by the chairman of Shincheonji, who is a promised shepherd and messenger whom Jesus sent for the churches, along with the 12 tribe leaders who learned the prophecies and fulfillment of Revelation from him. For that grace, we are sincerely grateful. Please be with the tribe leader who will be testifying to the content of Revelation 22 today. Let it be a time filled with perception, grace, and inspiration as he clearly proclaims the secrets of the kingdom of heaven as written in the book of Revelation. Let every pastor, theology student, and lay believer open up their hearts wide to be sealed with your word today so that they can glorify you for the love of the truth and limitless grace and life they receive from you. Please guide us with the Holy Spirit at this time and help us to be one within the word of the truth. We ask that you take control over this seminar to be a precious time of glorifying you. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who is our Savior. Amen. Today's seminar is being conducted via online with a strict adherence to health regulations and social distancing guidelines. 
Now, let's welcome up Saul James Tribe Leader, who will be explaining the fulfillment of Revelation in detail today. Greetings. It is a pleasure to meet you. I pray in Jesus' name that all of you who are so actively participating in this Revelation seminar will achieve your hope of heaven and eternal life. My name is Yu Youngju, tribe leader of Seoul James Tribe, who was appointed in the name of Jesus' disciple, James. Today, I will be testifying about Revelation chapter 22. Everyone, how has it been after hearing the word of testimony from Revelation chapters 1 to 22? Isn't it all shocking? But the testimony is according to the word of God, is it not? It is God and Jesus who fulfilled all that was promised and this is the work of the reality to Revelation's fulfillment being testified through the promised shepherd. Through Revelation chapter 22 being testified to today, please gain deeper perceptions and let us all become family of God's promised kingdom. The book of Revelation is a book with words of secrets concerning the kingdom of heaven with approximately 25 pages consisting of 22 chapters and 404 verses. This book is a book of promises. The title of Revelation chapter 22 today is A Holy City with the Tree of Life. The location of events to chapter 22 is the location of new heaven and new earth, where the spiritual world, that is, the holy city New Jerusalem, comes to dwell. This new heaven and new earth is the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony that is mentioned in Revelation chapter 15. Also, the time frame in which chapter 22 fulfills is after the spiritual world, the holy city, New Jerusalem, has come down. To simply summarize Revelation chapter 22, there is a river of the water of life that comes down from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. And on each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, a fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. God's servants will also see his face and they will reign forever and ever. Let us now read verses 1 to 2. Then the angel show me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. We can see here that there is an entity who is showing all these things. This entity is the same entity, the angel in Revelation chapter 21, verse 9, making all these things known. It is also written, the angel showed me. 
And the one who saw this revelation as a vision 2,000 years ago was Apostle John, who recorded these things. However, when the fulfillment of revelation is being testified to, it is the new John, the promised shepherd, whom Jesus promised. The throne of God and the Lamb is referring to just like it is referenced in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12 and verse 21, that they are together as one with the throne of the one who overcomes of Shinchonji. It is also written that the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flows from the throne of God and of the Lamb. But this doesn't mean it is literal water coming down from their throne, right? Thus, the river of the water of life that is clear as crystal is just as it is referenced in Deuteronomy 32, verse 2. It is a flawless and perfect word of truth. Also, the river of the water of life refers to the heart of an evangelist who received the word of truth and spreads it, as seen in John chapter 7, verse 37. Everyone, what tree is it that is on each side of the river? Yes. It is said that it is a tree of life. Everyone, do you remember where the tree of life is referenced in scriptures? Yes, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is referenced in Genesis since the time of Adam in the Garden of Eden. It is written that if one eats of the fruit of life, they will live forever. And if one eats the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, they will surely die. Thus, if one eats of the fruit of good and evil, they will die and become a tree of death. The tree of life that lives forever belongs to God. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil belongs to Satan. First, let's take a look at the tree of life. The reality of the tree of life at the time of first coming was Jesus, and the twelve disciples. In John chapter 15, verses 1 to 5, Jesus said, He is the true vine. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus also said that He is the way, the truth, and the life. Thus, Jesus is the reality of the tree of life, is he not? In Matthew 13, verses 31 to 32, a small mustard seed is planted and it becomes a huge tree. Thus, the birds come and perch on its branches, it says. It is said that this tree is like the kingdom of heaven and thus it is a tree of life. Also, the disciples were called the branches. If Jesus is a tree of life, and the disciples were the branches, then they too were the reality of the tree of life as well. At the time of second coming, just like what is in heaven takes place here on earth, we should perceive clearly that the one who overcomes and the twelve tribes of Shinchunji, where Jesus and the twelve disciples come down to dwell with, 
in Revelation 7 and Revelation 14 are the reality of the tree of life at the second coming. Therefore, the Bible makes it clear that where the tree of life dwells is that no other than Shincheonji, the twelve tribes where the holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down to dwell upon. If the tree of life is at Shincheonji, the twelve tribes, then everyone, Shouldn't we become someone who is a part of Shincheonji, the 12 tribes? Also, it is written that this tree of life produces 12 crops of fruit every month. The reality of, this, of these fruits is just as referenced in James chapter 1, verse 18. The congregants who were evangelized to every month and became new spiritual Israel, the 12 tribes. We here in Shincheonji Church of Jesus evangelizes to the family of God through the revealed word of truth every month and guide them to God every month, which all of you can see. Also, it is said that the leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of nations. And the reality of these leaves are the evangelists who receive and share the word of truth. In Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 12, it is written that the leaves of the tree of life will do the work of healing. Thus, it is through the leaves of the tree of life that all nations will get healed. Let's find out why the nations must get healed. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, we can also see the words stating that everything will be made new. As seen in Revelation 18, all nations are deceived by Babylon, the home of demons, and have become corrupt with the devil's image and ideologies. This is a reason to why the nations must be cleansed with the word of the water of life as clear as crystal, that is, they must be healed for them to enter into God's kingdom. Now, let us take a look into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The reality of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is Satan and Satan's pastor and those who belong to Satan's pastors. In Daniel chapter 20, verse 22, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon was referred to as a huge tree, and that tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 32 to 33, there is reference to a vine there, where the grapes are filled with poison and its wine is referred to the venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. This also is known as a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Thus, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil can be seen as the wine of adulteries as seen in Revelation chapter 17, verse 2 and Revelation 18, verse 3. This maddening wine of adulteries, just as you have learned well when learning Revelation chapter 17, is Satan's false lies, that is, commentaries. Also, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is judged in Revelation 18 and disappears in Revelation 20. Thus, in Revelation chapter 22, there is no tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is why all we see is a tree of life in the holy city. Let us now read verses 3 to 5. 
No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. We see in verses 3 to 5 an introduction of the servants in the holy city. As seen in verse 3, what does it say there will be no more of? Yes, that is correct. It says, no longer will there be any curse. Why would there be no curse in the holy city? It is because the throne of God and the Lamb are in the middle of the holy city. In other words, because God and Jesus dwell in the holy city, there will be no more curse. Furthermore, since that place is also built with those created with the words of Jesus, what is it that will not be seen there? It's because there's no sin there will there no longer be any curse either. Also, it is written that God's servants will see His face. Also, God's name will be on their foreheads, it says. And thus, these servants who see God's face are no other than the servants seen in Revelation chapter 7 and chapter 14, that is, the sealed 144,000 of the 12 tribes. Also, it says they will reign forever and ever. Reigning forever and ever means they have become the shepherds of God and Jesus, and together with the Lord, they will govern the congregation. Also, when it says there will be no more night in the holy city, and the reason why there is no need for the light of a lamp or the light of the sun is because God and Jesus directly shines the light of the Word, which is why another light or another lamp is not needed. Also, when it says there is no more night, those who are ignorant of God's word are considered spiritually as those belonging to the night. Since God and Jesus directly spiritually rears those in the holy city with the word, no more night shows that there is no one in the holy city who are ignorant of God's word. Now, let us look into verses 6 to 9. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and of all who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Verses 6 to 9 introduces the person who testifies on behalf. Everyone, 
After seeing this, does it remind you of what you learned prior? Do you by any chance remember where? Yes, it is what you learned in the beginning from Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Let's briefly look into the route of how Revelation is conveyed. As seen in the reference verses, an angel is sent to show God's servants what must soon take place. Also, it says, it is I, John, who have seen and heard all these things. So I hope and pray we will have the time to perceive the route of how Revelation is conveyed once again. In Revelation chapter 5, we saw a sealed scroll, sealed with seven seals in the right hand of God. This scroll sealed with seven seals was given to Jesus. And Jesus, who received this sealed scroll, opens up all the seals in Revelation 6 and Revelation 8. And thus, the scroll became a revealed book. This revealed scroll Jesus opened is then given to the angel who has it in his hand in Revelation chapter 10. The angel who received this revealed scroll from Jesus gives it to the new John, the promised shepherd whom Jesus appoints, and the new John spiritually eats it. Then isn't the scroll in the stomach of the new John? This is how Revelation is testified to God's servants, the twelve tribes, through the new John who ate the open scroll. Everyone, do you remember? Let's clearly perceive and remember that the sealed scroll in God's hand goes to Jesus. Jesus then opens it and gives that scroll to the angel, and the angel gives it to the new John. Let's clearly seal this in our hearts and perceive. Is there a book in God's hand then, or is there not? It's no longer there, correct? Is there a book in Jesus' hand, or is there not? It's not in the hands of Jesus either. Then, is there a book in the angel's hand? Yes, it's not in the hands of the angel either. The one who has this book is the new John, who received the revealed word, and we must absolutely perceive that he is the one who has the scroll now. All of you spiritual family throughout the world, Shouldn't we search for this new John who has received this revealed scroll? We must clearly know that it's only through this new John who received the revealed scroll can one perceive the secrets of heaven. It is also written that those who receive the revealed word are those who will be blessed. According to Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, there is a one who reads the words of his prophecy, and those who hear it, and amongst those who hear it, those who keep it, are those who are blessed. The blessings they receive is none other than receiving eternal life, the blessings of becoming God's kingdom and priests, all spiritual family throughout the world. Let's be those who hear the revealed word and make sure to keep it so we may receive the promised blessings of heaven and eternal life. Furthermore, the blessings of becoming kingdom and priests in Jesus' name. Now, let us read from verses 10 to 13. 
Then he told me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because a time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Verses 10 to 13 shows a reward or punishment according to what one has done. It says, do not seal up the words of prophecy in this book, meaning, do not seal up the prophecies of Revelation. It also means to open up one's mouth and testify to Revelation. In Revelation chapter 5, when the book is sealed with seven seals, no one can testify to it even if they wanted to, right? However, since Jesus opened up all the seven seals and fulfilled everything, the reality has now appeared. Since the reality of Revelation has appeared, the fulfillment can now be testified to. Now that everything has been fulfilled, it is saying to make known the words of Revelation and its reality to all nations so they can see, hear, and perceive. Let's look into the reward and punishments according to what one has done. Just as seen in Matthew 25, verse 46, it is eternal life or eternal punishment. Everyone, do you wish to receive eternal life? Or do you desire to enter into eternal punishment? Yes, there is not a single person who wishes to receive eternal punishment. Let us then look into who receives eternal life and who receives eternal punishment. Those who are holy and do what is right will receive the blessings of eternal life. However, those who are vile and continue to do wrong, that is, those who belong to the devil, will enter into eternal punishment. Let us all become clean through the word of life as clear as crystal coming down from the throne of God and Jesus. Become holy people who do what is right and receive the promised blessing of eternal life. It is also written that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. As we have learned, Alpha refers to prophecies, while Omega refers to the reality that fulfilled according to those prophecies, the fulfillment. Thus, Jesus being the Alpha and Omega is because He came and fulfilled into reality all the prophecies of God, who is also the Alpha and Omega, as seen in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. That is why Jesus is also known as the Alpha and Omega. I will give you a few more examples here. God, what He promised through Abraham at the time of Moses, fulfilled and accomplished everything. Furthermore, all the words promised to the Old Testament prophets, it was all fulfilled at the first coming through Jesus. 
This is just reflected in John 19, verse 30. Also, all that's promised in the New Testament revelation, today, at the time of Jesus' second coming, it all fulfilled. Just like it says in Revelation 21, verse 16. Now, let's go into reading verses 14 to 17. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Verses 14 to 17 shows the requirements to be able to enter the holy city, New Jerusalem. It refers to those who wash their robes, which means those whose hearts were stained with the devil, wash the clothes of their heart with the word of God and are born again. The current reality we are in is that all sorts of lies and false testimonies of God's word are rampant today. They call God's promised kingdom that is testifying to God's word of truth as heresy and we are experiencing all sorts of slander, curses, gossip, judgment, and persecution today. The people who have been doing these things must wash themselves clean with God's word as clear as crystal for them to meet the requirements to enter into the holy city. The gates in the holy city are referring to the 12 gates. The reality of these 12 gates are the 12 disciples who united with the 12 tribe leaders of new spiritual Israel in Revelation chapter 21. Also, in verse 15, there are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexual immoral, the murderers, and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Where does it say they are at? Yes, it says they are outside the holy city. The reality of these people are the betrayers who left and turned their backs on God and the destroyers who belong to Satan, who destroy God's tabernacle temple, as seen in Revelation chapters 13, Revelation chapter 17, and Revelation chapter 18. Since they are those outside the holy city, we can infer there is also an inside the holy city. Let's find out about those who are inside the holy city. Initially, the holy city is a city of New Jerusalem that is in the spiritual realm. The city of this New Jerusalem comes down to dwell with the new heaven and new earth as seen in Revelation chapter 21. Thus, the 12 tribes of Shincheonji where the holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down to dwell as one with, becomes the holy city here on earth. Those here at the holy city are those who partake in the first resurrection, as seen in Revelation chapter 20. 
The spirits of the martyrs, together with those who did not receive the mark of the beast, live and reign with Christ for a thousand years, it says. Thus, the holy city in Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 to 6, becomes the millennial city. It is written they will reign with Christ for a thousand years. So doesn't that mean they will be able to live at least a thousand years? The reason for this longevity is because the devil is captured and thrown into the abyss and the work of deception and sin disappears, which is why they are able to live longer. In turn, those outside the holy city, according to Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 to 10, are referred to as Gog and Magog. They are outside the holy city, and after the thousand years end, when the dragon, that is Satan, who is locked up in the abyss, is released, Gog and Magog are deceived by the devil, and together they encircle the millennial city and make war. They end up getting judged by God and together with the devil get thrown into hell, the lake of fire. Are all of you those inside the city or outside the city? Anyone outside the millennial city must clean their robes white with the revealed word of God so they can enter into the millennial city and become blessed. In verse 16, Jesus promises to send his messenger for the churches. First, this messenger is an angel in the spiritual realm. Also, here in the physical realm, there is a messenger who is Jesus' promised shepherd, the new John, the one who overcame. Then, shouldn't there be a promised shepherd, the new John, who comes to testify the revealed word to the churches, just as Jesus promised? When he arrives, would you become someone who believes? Or, like the first coming, would you be quick to judge, persecute, and kill? Since Jesus' messenger will be sent to the churches, the words of Revelation should become our standard, except Jesus' promised shepherd, the new John, and fulfill our hope of heaven and eternal life together. Also, it says the Spirit and the Bride are mentioned here. The Spirit is referring to Jesus, who is in the position of a spiritual groom, while the Bride is referring to Jesus' messenger, the new John whom Jesus is with. We have also seen in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, he is spiritually referred to as the wife of the Lamb. Also, it says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Here at Shincheonji Church of Jesus, we are giving the word of revelation like this in its entirety, free without cost. However, a lot of money have to be paid to seminary schools of the world if one wants to learn, right? We should truly perceive what is God's work and what is the work of truth. Now, let us read from verses 18 to 21.
I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Verses 18-21 to 21 speaks of the results of those who add to or take away from the words of Revelation. According to verse 18, if anyone adds to the words of Revelation, it says that God will add to him the plagues described in this book. In Revelation, if anyone adds to the words of Revelation, it is clear the plagues will be added to him. In Revelation, there were plagues every time one of the seven seals opened. There were also plagues every time one of the seven trumpets sounded. And there were plagues every time one of the seven bowls were poured out. We can also see there is a plague of the second death and the plague of the lake of fire as well. Therefore, we need to perceive clearly the plagues that are mentioned for anyone who ha adds to the words of Revelation. Also in verse 19, it says, If anyone takes words away from the prophecies of this book, then God will take away from his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. For anyone who takes words away from the book of Revelation, they will not be able to enter into the holy city or have a share of the tree of life. Simply put, it is promising they will not be able to enter heaven. The holy city in this reference is referring to the new heaven and new earth, Shincheonji, the 12 tribes with the holy city, New Jerusalem, in the spiritual realm comes down and dwells upon. After the gates of heaven close, those who are not able to enter will weep and gnash their teeth. Everyone, are you someone who added to and subtracted from the revelation, or are you someone who did not add to or subtract from it? To say one did not know revelation is also considered as having added to and subtracted from it. Even those who have testified to revelation incorrectly is considered having added to and subtracted from Revelation. Therefore, one must listen carefully to the words testified to by the promised shepherd whom Jesus sent, perceive, keep the word, and all become family who receive the blessings of the promised holy city, heaven, and eternal life. We must know the prophecies of Revelation and the reality of its fulfillment for us to receive the blessings of heaven and eternal life. In order for us to know Revelation, we must find and meet the messenger whom Jesus sends to the churches and absolutely receive his testimony for us to know Revelation. Now I will go over the conclusion. If we want to enter into the holy city in New Jerusalem, that is heaven, we must wear clean robes after washing it with the water of life as clear as crystal that comes down from the throne of God and the Lamb. Have our names recorded in the book of life and not add to or subtract from the words of Revelation. 
We must hear the words of prophecies of Revelation and its reality that the promised shepherd whom Jesus sent for the churches is testifying to. Keep those words and receive the blessings of heaven and eternal life. However, for those who do not keep the words of Revelation, the New Covenant, they cannot receive salvation at all. We must clearly perceive this. Within Christianity, we are carrying out a life of faith, believing in the same God, same Jesus, and the same Bible. Then, why must we be so divided like this? Shouldn't we all become united as one within God? When we had our last peace summit of the World Alliance of Religions, so many religious leaders of various religions from all over the world came together as one, and in front of God, in front of all the citizens of the world, they made a promise, sealing it with their signatures, that all religion will unite as one. Shouldn't we keep this promise? Who wants to lie or sin on purpose? However, if one doesn't know correctly, it could lead them to lie, and that can lead them into sin. Since you have now learned from Revelation chapters 1 to 22, if there are any mistakes, then please point them out and let us know. What are your thoughts after hearing Revelation chapters 1 to 22? In Hebrews chapter 6, we are told to leave the elementary teachings of Christ and go on to maturity. If we master Revelation, is there a greater mature teaching than that? The words of Revelation is true food that we must spiritually eat at the time of the end. We must eat this for us to gain eternal life and for us to enter into heaven. Dear pastors, please perceive these words perfectly and be a pastor who teaches your congregation. If you desire, Pastor, to get some teaching materials, we here at Shinchunji can share that with you. Then you can look through those materials and teach it to your congregation, right? We should truly, within God, enter into the Word of God and become one. We have no desire to be the leaders here amongst you nor do we want to sit in the highest seat and get higher. We just merely want to testify to what was seen and heard in front of God and Jesus. So let us truly unite as one within God. Next time, Chairman Lee Man Hee of Shincheonji Church of Jesus will guide this time with a special lecture you will be able to hear a special lecture from Chairman Lee Man Hee of Shincheonji, Church of Jesus, who directly saw the reality when Jesus fulfilled all the events of Revelation and has been testifying to them ever since. So I ask all of you to please join and hear the word of testimony as that is true spiritual food that we must eat at this proper time. I pray we will all become the family of God whose hope is in the Word and receive the blessings of heaven and eternal life. We must truly be one within God. Also, shouldn't we unite as one within the Word of Truth? Let's truly strive to become one. We are one. Yes, let's pray with one heart. Father God, we truly want to thank you. You have granted us tremendous grace like this and have allowed us to hear the prophecies and testimony of Revelation, the New Covenant, through this seminar 
starting from the special lecture throughout Revelation chapters 1 all the way to 22. And for your love and grace, we want to thank you. This word of revelation that cannot be understood at all through man's thoughts or knowledge has now been made known to us through you and Jesus. Jesus fulfilled all of this, and today, through an angel, this has made known to the promised shepherd the new John of the New Testament. And the promised shepherd of the New Testament has been testifying these words of revelation and its fulfillment to the churches just as he was commanded. This word of testimony is the trumpet sound of salvation, the seventh trumpet sound, and we believe that with this you will guide all the people of the world to your word of truth, Lord. Also, please open the eyes, ears, and hearts of the pastors, congregation members, and all the families of the world so they can hear and see this, perceive it, and come into you, come into this revealed word so that they may all receive the blessings of heaven and eternal life. We offer all gratitude to you for your huge grace and love for guiding us up to now. And we pray that not a single person will lack perception in their heart so that they enter into the lake of fire of hell. So we pray that every day your Holy Spirit will watch over every single one of them like the apple of your eye and protect them, Lord. We ask that you may receive all glory. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Doesn't it say that just as God and Jesus became one, we should also love each other and become one? Shouldn't we carry out a life of faith that heaven acknowledges? Isn't that true, everyone? Now, I'd like to speak to all the pastors from around the world. Let us all become one within God as promised. Let us become one within the Bible. Did you learn a lot from the seminar today? Many pastors from all over the world have been signing MOU with Shincheonji. After hearing the clear testimony of revelations, prophecy, and fulfillment, expressing their gratitude and joy of perceiving God's Word. I also hope all of you will hear and learn much from the seminar and participate in the precious duty of guiding many people to God. Next week, the chairman of Shincheonji will be testifying to the words of the four Gospels. Please be present next time too, so you can understand more about the work of God's love and His words of promise. If you have any questions about the lesson today, or any questions at all about Shincheonji Church and our teaching, please don't hesitate to dial the number on the screen. We'll guide you further by answering all of your questions kindly. Now, we'll finish today's seminar by offering up the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This will conclude Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. Thank you very much for being with us.